Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the 80 series build. Previously, I removed the engine out of the Land Cruiser and I tore it down to the bare block. Currently, the motor is at the machine shop, so I like to get some additional stuff done while I'm waiting. Today, I plan to drop the transmission, quite literally, because it needs to be resealed and the motor and tranny will be going back into the Land Cruiser as one unit. I'll also be restoring my wiring harness since it has a bunch of broken connector housings which have literally turned into glass over the last 30 years and testing out some sleeving products for wrapping this harness up. Let's get to it. I'm starting with the wiring harness and as you can see it's not in terrible shape but it can definitely use some TLC. I plan to fix some broken connectors and rewrap the harness. This is a brand new fuel injector clip. The other five that I'm showing here are the old ones and they all broke while unplugging them from the injectors. Luckily you can buy these individually and replace them. First you have to pull out this plastic lock from the connector and then you can use a small pick or depinning tool to lift the plastic tab inside the connector and release the terminal. But when the harness is old and dried out, chances are this won't happen so easily. Out come the pliers and it's time to make this plug no longer exist. Basically the plastic is old and brittle and fused to those terminals so I was not able to release them from the plug. They're essentially glass after 30 years so they tend to be pretty easy to destroy and extract the terminals. After that is done, I simply take those terminals and reinstall them into the new plug and then put in that plastic lock. And now I have to do the same thing for the remaining injectors on the harness. With the injector housings complete, I wanted to start rewrapping the harness. I removed all the old tape and I'm using Tessa Tape 51036 for this job. This tape is a high heat, flame retardant, and abrasion resistant tape that was specifically made for wiring harnesses that live in the harsh conditions of an engine compartment. For the breakouts, I tried using some split loom that I bought from Amazon, and while it looks nice, I found that I didn't really trust it on wiring that was going to be potentially prone to extremely high heat, such as the wiring that goes to the O2 sensors, and on the intake side of the block by the NOx sensors, which tend to get brittle from heat. This product says it can withstand 302 degrees Fahrenheit, but when put to the test by the heat gun, it melted nearly immediately, as you can see right here. So even though that's probably way hotter than 304 degrees Fahrenheit, I still wanted something tougher and I ended up going with TechFlex Insultherm, which as you'll see, does not break a sweat under the heat gun. This is not a split sleeve, so I did have to de-pin all the connectors I planned to use the sleeving on. But the peace of mind was worth it to me to have something extremely heat resistant so that I don't have anything to worry about. After sleeving the wires, I secured it with some adhesive line heat shrink, which gave it a really nice clean look as well as being functional. This section of the wiring runs really close to the EGR and what will happen is the wiring harness mount will break over time and the harness will rest on the EGR and basically melt all the wires together. The harness has thermal tape on it from the factory in this area but mine is gone as you can see. I'm using Thermotech Cool It tape to rewrap this section and hopefully prevent any future issues with the EGR melting my harness. All right. 
right, the wiring harness is finally complete and I can't lie, that took a lot more time than I had expected it to. I originally planned to just replace these six broken fuel injector clips, but what ended up happening is everything else was breaking too. So a lot of things in this little sub harness here, this goes to the side of the cylinder head, all of these broke. So you can see my ECT, my AC cutoff, and my coolant temperature sensor, all of those connector housings broke. So I'm kind of being held up by these at the moment. I have them on order, they should be here soon. And then I can get new ends crimped on here because you can see the wire split right there and then get these into the connector housings. But this harness looks really nice now. Got it all wrapped with that TechFlex Insultherm. And I did the same thing for this NOx sensor here and both of my O2 sensors. So the long one routes over the top of the transmission and I really feel better that these O2 sensors have this sleeving on them because that has to get really hot and as you saw with that heat gun, this um, mesh split loom doesn't do too well against heat. So basically I, I only use the mesh loom on the MAF right here. Everything else has this TechFlex Insultherm on it. It looks really good. Wrapped the whole rest of the harness and then I also protected this EGR section with this uh, thermo tape. So the Toyota harness comes with this from the factory, but it disintegrates over time and then you end up burning through it with the EGR. So we're not going to have that problem on this harness. But I think this harness looks really good. Um, didn't expect it to take as much time as it did, as I said, but really happy with the way that it turned out. So with that done, let's go ahead and hop over to the transmission. I can't lie to you guys, I've been putting off this transmission pull for like the past two and a half weeks, and today's the day we're finally gonna pull this thing out. It should be pretty easy. The engine's already out of the truck, of course, so the transmission is just kind of dangling there. Just gotta loosen the mounts, take the shifter out, and drop this thing out. The transmission fluid's already drained, so I'm gonna start with the transfer case right here. I also have more wiring work to do, look at this. I can just pull that loom right apart, expose all those wires right under it. So got more wiring to do on this harness right here, or at least just put a new loom on it. The drive shafts are out, but unfortunately I am gonna have to call it for the day because I am running out of daylight. There's not that many things left to do to drop this transmission out. I just basically have to take out the shift linkage for the transfer case and then hop into the interior and remove all of this stuff right here. And then I should be able to just loosen the mounts of the transmission and drop that thing out. the transmission's ready to be pulled and everything that was in the way is now out of the way but I better hurry up because it looks like it might start raining pretty soon. A couple of episodes ago I mentioned that the engine shouldn't come out of this thing without the transmission. It says that in the service manual and it makes sense. We have these transmission cooler lines, look how dirty that is. We have these transmission cooler lines that are now gonna have to be fished 
like down and back as I take the transmission out. I pulled the sway bar, got that out of the way. Really stupid mounting decision, by the way. The, the bolt for that sway bar goes there. When you try to take it out, it just hits the suspension. And on that side, it hits the brake line. You have to pull off brake lines to get the sway bar bolt out. Not a very smart design, but we do have a lot of stuff packed in here, so maybe that's just how they had to do it. Anyway, enough rambling. I think I just have to pull the mounts off and drop this transmission out. And as I said, fish these lines smoothly out of there so that they don't catch on anything. I picked up this new Harbor Freight transmission jack, which should make things easier, hopefully, with this gigantic transmission under here. This thing's really big and I didn't want to pull it with just a normal jack and, you know, your standard, you know, two by fours and poof, the thing hits the ground. So I decided to get an actual jack for this. Well, definitely found the heavy part of this transmission, which is absolutely this transfer case. I set it up on the pan right there on the transmission jack and had to bring out another jack because the transfer case is so heavy, the whole transmission kind of pitched to the rear. So just rolling back both of them evenly and we're getting this thing out. We're gonna have to jack up the actual Land Cruiser itself too to pull the transmission out of there. Hardest part so far has been getting those transmission lines out of the way, these guys right here but they finally cleared um, the pan hard bar and now we can hopefully scoot the rest of that transmission out of there. This is a really sketchy thing I'm doing. There's a pretty high chance this whole thing falls. Got the transmission out and now there's even more things to fix and repair, check this out. So let's address the obvious first. This thing's been leaking for thousands of miles. As you can tell, the entire thing is coated in oil. Sorry for the quality, it's dark outside, but whole thing's leaking. Gotta reseal this thing, probably do some maintenance on it as well. And probably gonna install some low range gears in the transfer case since we're here. Uh, additionally, the wiring loom is falling apart, so I mean, look at that. So I'm gonna have to go through here and, you know, restore this wiring harness too, just like the other one. And um, yeah, so a lot more work to do with this transmission on top of everything we're already doing on the Land Cruiser build. Fun times. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's episode of the 80 series build. Thank you for following along throughout this project. If you like this video, if you wanna see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later. Here we go, at the top of the class on the road.